Hi everyone, I'm Matthew Moniz, and this is the ZTE Axon 7, a flagship phone that doesn't cost a flagship price. Now I imagine most people looking at this phone are wondering whether they should buy this one or should they go for the OnePlus 3. I'm going to make a lot of comparisons to it in this video, and at the end, I'll let you know which one I recommend. So is the Axon 7 worth it? Let's find out. So let's start off with what I liked about the Axon 7, and the first thing is the design. It's made out of all metal like most flagships, but instead of being a typical slab, it has a nice curve on the back. The curve does bring some exceptions, for example, the phone feels more front heavy and the edges are a tad sharper than a typical rounded smartphone. Minor details aside, it still feels fine in the hand, but if you want to change the look or make it easier to hold, you can always slap on a beautiful D-brand skin like this one. Buttons are well placed and feel premium. It's using the new USB Type-C standard and the front holds two stereo speakers. Everything screams flagship, including the super fast fingerprint scanner on the back. The Axon 7 has a dual slim slot but only comes in one storage size at 64 gigabytes. But the biggest difference between this phone and the OnePlus 3 is that this one supports micro SD card expansion. Also with the Axon 7 you're getting a beautiful QHD AMOLED panel that's significantly better and it's almost as good as the one on the S7 Edge. The main difference is that the S7 Edge gets brighter but the Axon has higher contrast ratios so you're going to get more vibrant reds, greens and darker blacks. Now to go along with this great screen is fantastic audio. The two front facing speakers get loud, have nice highs and decent bass, but it also comes with an internal 32-bit DAC that significantly improves the listening experience. If you have a good pair of headphones, the audio will sound much better than your typical smartphone. Battery life was good too, I was able to get through the entire day with at least 30% battery life left. That included my typical day of listening to music while working out, podcasts, browsing the web, and watching a few videos. In comparison, the OnePlus 3 offered similar results. Now because it's using a Qualcomm chip, it supports quick charging 3.0 that will net you 50% of your battery life in just 30 minutes of charging. Now speaking of quick, so is the actual performance. It's using the exact same Snapdragon 820 chips that are inside the Galaxy S7 or HTC 10. Pair this with 4GB of RAM and the phone just eats anything you throw at it. It runs the latest version of Android which is 6.0 and uses ZTE's My Favorite Theme. The theme itself is nothing special. It has a few nice features like being able to unlock the phone, using your voice, schedule times to turn your phone on and off, and a slew of gestures that make your phone easier to use. Some of them are quite useful and the ones that are not can simply be disabled. Now the only downfall of using the Mi Favor launcher is that you end up with no app drawer, but the Axon 7 has a second launcher called Stock Android that remedies this issue. Okay, so a quick recap of the good stuff. We have a beautiful design, great audio, fast performer, a good display, and good battery life. It so far pretty much does a great job in each category. Now there are a few things that could be improved. And the first one is the capacitive buttons. Not only do they add to the length of an already long phone, but they are also poorly placed. I can't count the times I'd be typing and hit the space bar to only be taken back to the home screen. I feel this is one area that software buttons make a lot more sense. Second are a few minor issues with the software experience. For one, viewing the notifications on your lock screen requires an extra step. You have to press the alert on the top left in order to see them. I tried disabling this, but there doesn't seem to be a way to do it. Third is creating folders. Usually to create a folder, you just drag and drop one icon over the other and it automatically creates a folder for you. You can't do this with me favor. You have to manually create a folder by first dragging an icon to the top of the screen, then it will let you drop other apps into the folder itself. And last is the camera. The Axon 7 has a 20 megapixel camera with an f1.8 aperture and optical image stabilization. On paper, it sounds pretty good, but in reality, it's actually just decent. It's not better than any of the other more popular flagship phones on the market, but it sits in line nicely with today's mid-range lineup. The pictures look great on a nice day, but sometimes the exposure is off and the photos looked washed out. With an f1.8 aperture, I thought it would produce good low light photos, but images ended up being soft with muted colors. I found the camera on the OnePlus 3 to do a much better job in low light conditions. You know what, enough of me jabbering. Here are some more pictures and 4K video you decide for yourself.
All right, so my final thoughts. There's no doubt that the Axon 7 is one of the best phones you can get for $400 US. It comes with a nice design, gorgeous display, amazing audio, and great battery life. However, it does lack a good camera, and the software is full of a lot of little glitches that need to be fixed in order to polish the user experience. So we come back to the main question at the beginning of this video. Should you buy this phone, or should you buy the OnePlus 3? Well, it depends on a couple of things. If you value a better display and superior audio, get the Axon 7. However, if you prefer a more polished software experience and slightly better camera, go for the OnePlus 3. It really comes down to what you prefer at the end of the day. The bottom line is that it's becoming really hard to justify spending $800 to $1,000 on a flagship phone where the only thing that's truly better is the actual camera experience. For $400, the Axon 7 is a no-brainer and one of the best phones you can get at this price point. So that wraps up my review of the ZTE Axon 7. Let me know what you guys like about it in the comments down below. Is this something you're going to go out and buy? And if you have one already, I really want to hear what you have to say about it. Thank you everyone for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, feel free to smash that like button. If you're new to the channel, subscribe. And as always, I will see you in the next video.